Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Ask Prep. In today's series on 11th grade physics, we will be studying chapter 7, systems of particles and rotational motion in detail. Let's start the video. What is center of mass? For a system of particles, the center of mass is defined as the point where the entire mass of the system is imagined to be concentrated for the consideration of its translational motion. If all the external forces acting on the body or system of bodies were applied at the center of mass, the state of rest or motion of the body or system would remain unaffected. See the image. Now let's understand motion of center of mass. I'm going to see equation of center of mass. We will see certain equations. So again, we will consider a body. This is M1, this is M2 and this is Mn. Last particle Mn is at a position of R1, position vector M2 is having a position vector R2, M1 is having position vector Rn. This is origin O, this is x-axis and this is y-axis. Let us consider, let us consider moving body here we are considering a moving body here we can add motion equation of motions of center of mass moving body made moving body made by n particles of masses m1 m2 Mn. Let R1, R2, Rn be the position vectors and V1 bar, V2 bar, Vn bar be the velocity vector respectively respectively then position vector of center of mass is given by r c m bar is equal to m1 r1 bar plus m2 r2 bar plus mn rn bar divided by we know total mass m now taking first derivative of r c m bar with with respect to time we have we are going to take the first derivative so we will take m over here m d r c m upon d t is equal to m1 d r1 upon d t m2 d r2 upon d t plus mn drn upon dt but we know that but we know that dr1 upon dt is nothing but velocity v 1 dr2 upon dt is equal to v2 and so on dr cm upon dt is equal to vcm now substitute this equation this is equation this is equation 1 this is equation 2 this entire term we will substitute in equation 2 substituting into we will get 
एम वी सी एम बार इज इक्वल टू एम वन वी वन बार प्लस एम टू वी टू बार प्लस एम एन वी एन बार इक्वेशन थ्री दिस इज मास इन टू वेलोसिटी मास इन टू वेलोसिटी इज मोमेंटम सो मोमेंटम ऑफ सेंटर ऑफ मास इज इक्वल टू सम ऑफ मोमेंटम ऑफ ईच पार्टिकल वी कैन से दैट द द मोमेंटम ऑफ सेंटर ऑफ मास इक्वल्स सम ऑफ मोमेंटम ऑफ ईच पार्टिकल ना अगेन वी कैन वेयर एंज वी सी एम बार इज इक्वल टू समेशन आई इज इक्वल टू वन टू एन एम आई वी आई बार अपॉन कैपिटल एम दिस इज इक्वेशन फोर इक्वेशन नंबर फोर अगेन डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग differentiating equation 4 we will get dv bar cm upon dt is equal to 1 upon m d e d t upon summation m i v i bar i is equal to 1 to n this is acceleration we know that acm is equal to 1 Upon m, please differentiate. Will only operate on v. Therefore, summation i is equal to one to m m i a i bar. Let f one bar, f two bar, f n bar be the external force on M one, M two, M particles. Then we can write one a one bar is equal to F one capital F one, M two a two bar is equal to F two. Likewise, M n a n bar is equal to F n. Therefore. Summation i is equal to one to m i a i is equal to summation i is equal to one to n f i bar. This is this full term is equal to m times a c m. Therefore, m times a c m bar is equal to summation i is equal to one to n f one bar. equation number 5 but now we will consider newton's third law according to newton's third law of motion all the internal forces will occur in equal and opposite so that the net force net here we will say internal force internal force on the system system is equal to zero very important we will consider a body and inside this this will force will act on this direction because of this particle the force will act on in this direction so the force are same in magnitude but opposite in direction because of which when we will consider the net force internal force inside the body that will always be equal to zero according to newton's third law hence summation i is equal to 1 to n f1 bar represents the sum 
of only the external forces acting on all the particles so that m a c m is equal to force in this force is sum of internal force plus external force since internal force are zero so here we will take into account only the external force where a c m is acceleration of center of mass angular momentum angular momentum or moment of momentum about an axis of rotation is a vector quantity whose magnitude is equal to the product of the magnitude of momentum and the perpendicular distance from the line of action of momentum to the axis of rotation its direction is perpendicular to the plane containing the momentum and the perpendicular distance next is moment of inertia the rotational inertia of a rigid body is referred to as its moment of inertia the moment of inertia of a body about an axis is defined as the sum of the products of the masses of the particles constituting the body and the square of their respective perpendicular distances from the axis moving forward with radius of gyration lecture is about the radius of gyration in this lecture i will show you how we find the radius of gyration of any object consider this is any rectangular shape section of the object rectangular having width b and having depth at the height equal to h so we can find the radius of gyration of this object by this formula this moment of inertia divided by the area of the section the moment of inertia of the section dividing by the area of the section so we get the radius of gyration and this is very important topic for all civil engineering students so the movement of inertia of this object can be found out by b h cube divided by 12 and the area can be found out by the b into h because there is a rectangular object so we can find by multiplying the two dimensions so let us take an example that this is known to us as 5 cm that is the width and the height is 10 cm taking the example so putting these values we will get the required quantities the moment of inertia comes out to be 5 into 10 divided by 12 i put just reduce into this equation while the area comes out to be 5 into 10 the depth into width so this comes out to be 416.66 into centimeters is to the power 4 and the 50 cm square remember that there should be the same unit centimeter or centimeter or meter square or meter square or maybe an inch square but the unit should be same so now put this moment of inertia in the area values and to this and this equation so we will get the radius of gyration of this rectangular object so radius of gyration comes out to be i divided by a and when i put this value for 16.66 the moment of inertia and the area dividing by the area is 50 and taking the under root so we will get the answer which comes out to be 2.88 So I get the radius of gyration for this object for this rectangular object having dimension of 5 cm is a width height is 10 cm so radius of gyration comes out to be 2.88 of this object You can find the radius of gyration of this object if you know how to find the moment of inertia of the object and the area of the object just putting this value and taking the under root you can find out the radius of gyration of any object theorem of parallel axis according to this theorem the moment of inertia i of a body about any axis is equal to its moment of inertia about a parallel axis through the center of mass theorem of perpendicular axis according to this theorem 
the moment of inertia i of a body about a perpendicular axis is equal to the sum of the moments of inertia of the body about two axes at right angle to each other in the plane of the body and intersecting at a point where the perpendicular axis passes thank you for watching we will be dropping notes in the description of this video if you found this video helpful kindly like subscribe and share see you in the next video all the best for your exams